Hi class, I was just going through your forum posts from, um, I believe it was forum number 7, the muddiest points for the chapter and I thought that I should just provide you a little bit more information, uh, hopefully in the form of this screencast it's going to make more sense to you, uh, as to what we mean by pH and uh, why do we need a logarithmic scale, how do we do the calculation, what is molarity, etc. I'm, I'm going to try to put um, all those concepts in perspective in the next 10 to 15 minutes. Um, so as you can perhaps envision, um, pH is it's a random scale which is basically based on acidity. It's a scale. So it measures acidity. Um, some people might say that it measures alkalinity and that's okay it's in an indirect manner though. Um, as you know, water is at pH 7 Anywhere between 0 to 7, we are going to call that an acidic solution. Anywhere between 7 to 14, we are going to call that a basic solution or an alkaline solution. Um, that does not mean that there aren't any compounds which will not have any pH like less than 0 or could be more than 14. Yes, you can have that. Those will be called super acids and super bases, but that's beyond the scope of this, um, this course. It's way into grad school. Um, Realize that neutral pH, which has a pH of 7, is for pure water. That means that the concentration of hydronium ion and hydroxide, which is going to come from water, which is, as you can see, a bond between hydrogen and oxygen. Those are two non-metals, so it is a polar covalent compound. Polar covalent compound. And when two molecules of water react with each other, H2O plus H2O, they give you a hydronium ion and hydroxide ion. So you can perhaps envision just seeing this reaction that one of the water molecules is acting as the source of proton, the other is acting as the acceptor of proton. So proton donor is the acid part, proton acceptor is the basic part, and it is generating hydronium and hydroxide. Turns out there is experimental proof, there is um, a proof that the concentration of this hydronium and hydroxide in pure water is exactly equal and it comes out to be 1 times 10 to the power of negative 7 which hopefully you can envision that if you take to uh, try to take the negative log of this number negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 7 um, that means that you would be taking a negative log of 1 because it's to the base 10, that value will come out to be 0. And the multiplication will get converted to plus, you can write it as negative of negative 7. And then log to the base 10 is going to end up being 1. Uh, and so your final answer from here is going to come out to be 7. Let's, let's just write perhaps, let me make some space here and show you that one more time. So... I was talking about trying to find out for a very simple negative log of 1 times 10 to the power of negative 7. In terms of log, it's going to be written as negative log to the base 10, and you're finding it for 1. Since it's a multiplication, you're going to say that you will be adding that log. That means plus negative log of... 10 to the power of negative 7 and in the next step you can say that this is going to come out to be 0 and the reason for that is because you're trying to find it for 1 and it is to the base 10. Um, since you have an exponent here as negative 7 it's going to come out to be minus of minus 7. You're trying to find out the log when the base and the number are exactly the same. So that number will come out to be 1 according to the rules of log. So 7 times 1, that is 7, and that comes out to be your final pH value. Realize any number less than this, so something like 6, something like 5, those will be called as weakly acidic, weakly acidic, 
and anything the more there is an acid which is uh, close to zero that will be called as strongly acidic likewise the more there is a base which is between let's say seven to nine you would call that weakly basic weakly basic and more is a, a number, a pH value that is closer to 14, perhaps 12 or beyond, that will be strongly basic. Strongly basic. Realize any material which has the ease to give off the protons to generate that hydronium ion will be considered a strong acid. So, in general, for your level, for your class, you can perhaps remember that if you're comparing something like sulfuric acid, sulfuric acid versus sulfurous acid, the ic acid, the one that ends in an ic, the ic acid is going to be a strong acid. Whereas the us acid is going to be a weak acid. Okay, so in general, when you're comparing between the ic acids and the us acids, the ic acids are strong, the us acids are weak. So things like phosphorus, nitrous, uh, sulfurous, hypochlorous, chlorous, those are all examples of weak acids. Whereas sulfuric, phosphoric is moderately strong, um, nitric. Chloric, perchloric, all those are examples of a strong acid. The only ones that are weak um, uh, and the end as an ic acid would be um, acetic acid, CH3COOH, which is a component of uh, vinegar. Boric acid, H3BO3. BO3, sometimes used um, uh, to, to heal wounds. Um what else uh, carbonic acid h2co3 that's nothing but rain water so those are those are names that end in um, vinegar. Vinegar. those are names that end in an ic acid but those are weak acids in general but one way to decipher what is a strong acid what is a weak acid is their ability to be able to give off that proton and for your level you can of course differentiate between the ic and the ouc but how we distinguish between the strong and the weak it goes all the way up to organic too and there are some concepts that we can only explain for majors uh, because they are way more complicated um, as far as as far as um, the concepts uh, pertaining those go um, let's consider bases any hydroxide donor so something like NaOH would be considered a strong base strong base so something like NaOH something like uh, MgOH whole twice anything which gives you a hydroxide is going to be considered a strong base something like ammonia NH3 that is considered a weak base so Drano which contains sodium hydroxide Drano to clean up the uh, kitchen sink um, that is going to be considered a strong base, whereas ammonia that comes in uh, Windex, that will be considered a weak base. Okay, another question that a lot of you were curious about was, why are we interested in molarity? So, what is molarity? And why are we interested in it? And that's a very interesting question. I mean, uh, why should we be interested so much when we are talking about solutions? Realize, anytime you run a reaction, you always generate a solution of the acid, a solution of the base. So it's important for you to realize what a solution is. A so solution is nothing but um, some component, something like a solid, liquid, or a gas, which when dissolved in a bulk quantity, uh, the combination of the two is going uh, to be called as solution. So solution contains of two components. One is called as a solute and the other is called as the solvent. The solvent is the one which is your bulk quantity. Solute is the one which is smaller in amount. 
smaller in amount. So much the same way as if you're making, let's say, lemonade and you have to uh, dissolve a little bit of salt in, in um, water. Um, in this case, we are saying that you have HCl gas, which is being dissolved in water. But as that occurs, HCl also reacts with that water and it actually gives you hydronium ion and a chloride. Realize HCl has acted as the donor for the proton and water has simply accepted that proton. Earlier I said proton donors are acids. And so water will behave as a base. I said it this way because some of you were also getting confused in terms of the pH scale uh, being at 7. And so you were saying that if water is neutral, how can it start behaving as a base or an acid? So how can it have the amphoteric uh, nature, sometimes also referred to as the amphiprotic uh, behavior? But realize realize that water is seven when it is pure when it is just pure water that means the amount of hydronium and hydroxide is exactly the same if you put water in presence of something which has a better capability of donating proton or in presence of something which has a better capability of accepting proton then it will start behaving as a base or an acid respectively according to what it is placed with so anything which has the capability of let's say so if you have a solution um, the pH of which is 3 you would say the pH of 3 is going to be more acid-like or more acidic as compared to pure water. But now if you compare that to a solution of maybe sodium hydroxide, the pH of which is maybe 12, you're going to say that water, that solution by itself is going to be, uh, or pure water is going to be uh, more acidic as compared to the solution of sodium hydroxide so it really depends on what you're placing it with so going back to the question why molarity uh, molarity realize is moles of solute per liter of solution so in this case if I have generated a solution of HCl in water and suppose I got um, 100 grams of HCl okay uh, in order to find out the moles of solute, you know that moles can be calculated. Um, if you know the grams that you have and you divide it by the molar mass. Since this is HCl from the periodic table, you can perhaps take 1 for hydrogen and 35.5 for chlorine. So the molar mass of HCl will be 36.5 grams per mole. So now if you have 100 grams, if you divide it by the 36.5 grams per mole, the grams and grams will cancel off. And let's see on my calculator, I'm going to say 100 divided by 36.5, and I'm getting a 2.74 for the correct number of significant figures. 2.74 moles is uh, the number of moles of solute that I got. Let's say I prepare the solution such that I prepare uh, a total of one liter of solution for the volume. And what I mean by the total of one liter of solution means uh, that the volume taken up by these 2.74 moles is included in that one liter. So if that is the case, then we would say that the molarity in this case is going to be 2.74 divided by 1, which is going to be just 2.74 moles per liter or capital M or moles per liter. So if you say capital M or whether you want to call it as moles per liter, which is a concentration, uh, it basically means the same thing. Now if you had to calculate the pH of this solution, since hydro chloric acid it's an ic acid it's a strong acid that means it's going to completely ionize and let's say you had 100 parts of that hcl all 100 are going to uh, get converted into 
um, h plus and cl minus and so what that means is that if you take the negative log of this 2.74 you would get the pH of the solution now when I plug this number in my calculator and this is a TI-30 that I'm using because that's probably the kind of calculator you will get at the testing center or are allowed to bring anyways. Um, the number that I'm getting is a negative and the log part is giving me 0 0.4377. So all I did was basically plugged in log, uh, parentheses, whatever my number is, parentheses closed, hit enter. And that's the number that you get. It's a negative number. So this is an example of a you know, close to a super acid and it makes sense um, on the pH scale. Uh, suppose instead of one liter, suppose I would have had a really a big, big number, maybe let's, let's say 10,000 liters or something like that. 10,000 liters, okay? So what that would mean is my molarity in that case would end up being, so my volume becomes 10 to the power of 4, and so my molarity is going to be, let's fix this, let's change that. Um, it's going to be 2.74 times 10 to the negative 4 capital M. And now let's see if we can find out the pH for this particular scenario. So again, by definition of pH, negative log of 2.74 times 10 to the negative 4 should give you the pH. So I have for you negative log to the base 10 for 2.74. And then minus, since there is a product sign in between, that uh, essentially changes into a plus sign on the logarithmic scale. Um, 10 to the power of minus 4. I'm just taking this stepwise. Uh, on my calculator again, the minus 2.74, that's going to look like negative 0 0.4377 plus minus of, uh, it's the rule of the log that whatever is the exponent that becomes the product log to the base 10 and you're finding it for 10 so that becomes 1 so essentially the math that you're operating here is negative 0 0.4377 plus 4 so the answer that you get is 3.5622 so 3.5622 on the pH scale. Uh, realize it's on a pH scale. There are no units associated with it. Um, that will be the pH. So one can perhaps see, compare the previous case that we did. That was that gave me a pH of 0 0.43, and the hydronium ion concentration was 2.74 moles. Now the hydronium ion concentration was 10,000 folds lesser. It was, it had decreased. And notice the pH uh, has moved up. It is essentially uh, now 3.56. It's a positive pH. Realize with every 10 fold increase in the concentration of the acid, the pH will decrease um, by one unit. So that's the relationship that you can perhaps envision between uh, the pH and hydronium ion concentration. So what I just said was that if on a pH scale, if you're saying that the pH is becoming, it's going from 7 to 6, that means in terms of hydronium ion concentration, the change which ha would have occurred 10 times. If it's, if it's 100 times, then that means the pH will change um, by two units, so on and so forth. Let's see uh, the data that we got. So pH came out to be 3.5622. Uh, let's see if we can convert, if we are given a pH of 3.5622, uh, whether we can figure out what would be the concentration of the hydronium ion. Uh, there's a wide variety of different ways to do that but really what this actually means is that log 10 for the hydronium 
is equal to negative 3.5622. Or one can say that uh, hydronium ion concentration is 10, the base, to the power of negative 3.5622. One way to look at it would be that this can be written as 1 over 10 raised to the power of 3.5622. So depending on the calculator that you have, uh, there are calculators on which you can simply just hit, just enter negative 3.5622 and hit second and then log. So basically it will calculate 10 uh, to the power of x, that's what it's going to calculate. So it will take the anti-log immediately. Um, and there, uh, there are other calculators such as this TI-30 that I have, uh, which is a more primitive kind, I would imagine. So in that case, I have to know that 10 to the power of minus 3.5622 is same as writing 1 over 10 to the power of 3.5622, which is 1 over 3676.9, and that comes out to be 2. 2.74 times 10 raised to the power of um, negative 4, which was my original concentration to begin with. So hopefully you uh, can calculate um, something as simple as 1 times 10 to the negative 2 and calculate the pH from there to something more complicated, 4.98, and then we did a more dilute solution for that as well. Um, and likewise, um, we hopefully are also able to see that if you're given a pH, uh, realize the basic difference between pH and hydronium concentration. Usually hydro hydronium concentration, most of the time, 99.99% of the time, you would see that written as uh, in a scientific notation. So number times 10 to the power of something, whereas a pH is always written usually as, as a number. So that's one way to 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 figure out though I also gave you uh, an example of concentration being just 2.74 uh, which was a high molarity and that is why you ended up with um, with a negative pH for that particular case so hopefully all your questions would have would would have been answered um, and if not if you have another question or if um if 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 you think if you think of something feel free to email oh before i sign off i wanted to address one more thing um going back to the molarity um realize that for any balanced reaction so i showed you a couple times now i showed you uh, let's just erase that um maybe right okay so i showed you how hcl reacts with water, gives you hydronium ion and chloride. Or maybe the solution of HCl that you're providing, you know, that's, that HCl is going to be used to react with sodium hydroxide and it's going to give you NaCl plus H2O. Let's, let's take a look at the second reaction. Let's get rid of that. So this is a acid-base neutralization reaction where you have a solution of HCl, you have a solution of sodium hydroxide which gives a solution of NaCl and water is generated uh, as a liquid form. Um, so realize when you read this balanced chemical equation you can say that one mole of HCl is going to react with a mole of sodium hydroxide and a mole of NaCl and mole of water gets generated. So what did we just learn? We learned that the balanced chemical equation is in terms of moles not grams and so that is the reason why dealing with molarity becomes an important thing because you can directly correlate that to the moles that will be required since you know going back to my previous example that I that I just gave you if you have taken 100 grams of HCl and um, what did that come out to be 2.74 
for the molarity. That means that if I have for one liter, if I have 2.74 moles with me, that would mean that I need 2.74 moles of sodium hydroxide and that will generate 2.74 moles of NaCl and water. So I can uh, look at a balanced chemical equation through moles, not through grams. That is the reason that we use molar concentration or molarity, which is why doing molar concentration calculations becomes really important for acid-base solutions. So hope that helped you. And like I said previously, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'll be more than happy to help you with that. Okay? All right. Bye-bye.